Thanks so much. I really enjoyed it. Okay, now I have uh, 35 minutes for a small conversation with you. Here goes. First question. Um, what is your biggest, biggest concern that you have? If you look at your talk uh, from a global point of view, what is your biggest concern? Uh, from a global point of view, my biggest concern is uh, for my children. Uh, I have three. Uh, they are great. Uh, and uh, I have an incredibly uh, open and wonderful relationship with them. And uh, I feel responsibility for, for them and how they are going to be able to live in the future. Okay. Can you give us a little bit more uh, insight? W um, which topics are you? Oh, you? well, um, um, learning, to keep learning, uh, to... Um, design their lives in a manner that uh, fulfills them and it, it is uh, um, freed from constraints that are closing in on too many people. Um, the nation states, uh, as I see them, are um, close to going crazy. Um, uh, they are ready to kill a lot of people uh, in order to survive and we have to really be alert uh, if we want to survive because uh, they are, you know, I see uh, technology in a much more general term than, than, than many. Uh, and so technology expresses systems. Systems are complex. Systems are autonomous. Systems are morally weak. And uh, corporations and nations are just very complex autonomous systems that are morally weak. So, uh, uh, very concretely, uh, I am training my children to be technomatic, as I am, um, uh, bringing them with me on trips or sending them on, on, on trips uh, uh, to New Zealand, to Japan for a few months to more or less fend for themselves and uh, uh, to, to make sure that uh, they, they cannot be concretely trapped uh, in any continent, but they have uh, other places to go. Um, the, the problem, of course, that we only have one planet for the moment, so I, I, I cannot hedge the bets enough yet. Okay, so that makes sense. There's a good bridge towards, you, you talked about dignity, right? Uh, dignity, so how can we uh, spur dignity in society? Are, are you thinking about, for example, uh, basic income or something else? Or Can, can you share, share, share your thoughts about this? Yeah, so... Um, um, if I pronounced the swear word that used to be um, attributed as a label to black people in America up to 50 year years ago, it now has such a negative connotation that this entire video would be overshadowed by that single use of the word, right? And we have to achieve a swear word status like that for the label unemployed. Today, uh, if somebody is uh, without a job, uh, in most societies there are no guarantees. In some societies there is a limited amount of time where the society says, okay, get your act together, uh, be useful, and hurry up, what are you waiting for? Are you lazy? Um, what's happening? Are you addicted? Are you, what's the problem? Are you depressed? Why didn't you solve the problem yet? Okay, too late, go die in a ditch. Um, now, if it is a relative minority, this can work, it's inhuman, inhumane, uh, but it can work. But uh, I was in Greece, um, just a few months ago and uh, if you are less than 30 years old uh, you have a 30 to 40 percent probability to be without a job. Uh, if you are uh, a 30 year old in a given region in the country or a series of regions the probability goes to 60 and if you are young in the wrong region of the country and a woman it is 80%. So it, 
So are 80% of Greek women stupid or lazy or, or unworthy of dignity? Uh, so th this is very important. And universal basic income is, is uh, um, becoming more and more uh, discussed and talked about. Um, I think it is going to be part of the solution. Okay, great. So how does it, the, for example, the situation in Greece relate to your vision of network, network society? For example, do you see new organizational models uh, emerge? Yes. Because of scarcity in those situations? Um, there is no scarcity. Okay. Uh, there is um, a, a myopic belief that money is a substance that uh, has uh, limits and that there is a natural law about how money should work. But it is, it's crazy. Uh, you know, if I jump out of this window, you will see what natural law means. But uh, that, is, that is very, very different. So in Greece, absolutely, uh, there are extensive networks of resilient and self-reliant communities um, that uh, are essential for the survival of, of people. Um, starting from very simply, a lot of people having second homes in the countryside and a lot of people growing vegetables or, or just starting to understand that it can become a resource. I met a startup, for example, uh, that is uh, teaching uh, urban dwellers uh, how to care for the plot of their family that goes back hundreds of years. Uh, and uh, they are using remote drone-based monitoring of the crops that are growing uh, and feed the, the real-time video uh, to the, the, the couple who are web designers in Athens. Uh, and, and these are wonderful. There is a problem. Uh, in order to reform the social contract, uh, you need uh, a constitutional reform. And in many countries, the social contract, I mean, I, I think everywhere, the social contract needs to be profoundly reformed, right? And specifically in Greece, it is illegal to discuss the constitution. It is uh, an exclusive uh, uh, that pertains to the political class. Uh, and uh, you are subversive and I think uh, easily labeled a terrorist uh, if you are actually openly discussing the Constitution and the fact that it might need reform. So uh, I wonder if you look, for example, at blockchain, right? Um, the blockchain will impact the governmental yeah, function in its core. We already have startups like uh, Big Nation or uh, trying to disrupt parts of the government. You have the movement by Silicon Valley to disrupt different governmental services. For example, Google is exploring this uh, domain increasingly. Uh, Peter Thiel was talking about it, even the libertarian movement. If you combine all these weak signals, what do you anticipate will happen, let's say, in the next 10, 20 years in terms of yeah, power struggle? Hey, you talked about with the government, it's probably uh, has, has to minimize their power to a certain degree because citizens, as you have shown yeah, powerfully, in my view, will take up more responsibilities. Right? Yeah. So how do you see this evolve? Yeah. Um, at Network Society Ventures, we want to invest globally. And one of our targets, uh, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but uh, really strategically is Africa. Africa uh, and India. Uh, China is, 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 is incredible, wonderful, but very, very hard, um, are uh, places where uh, a lot of the infrastructure that we uh, rely on just doesn't work. Uh, in India, 80% uh, of the real estate is contested. Uh, if I sell you a house, somebody else is almost guaranteed will come and say, oh, oh, ha. Uh, that wasn't David's, sorry, you don't own it. And it takes 30 years to resolve uh, a, a real estate case. Um, and, and this, of course, is an incredible dampening factor on all kinds of economic development, because uh, if then you go to a bank and say, hey, 
I want a loan and this is my collateral, the bank will check whether you actually own the house and they will find out that nobody knows whether you own the house. So you cannot use it as a collateral, right? Um, and and uh, simultaneously, uh, some of our concerns around privacy and individual data and data protection uh, don't apply. In terms of the benefit of strong identification, biometric identification uh, with uh, retinal uh, imprints that are now being rolled out to hundreds of millions of Indian citizens, the advantage is so far outweighing the, the, the you know, potential privacy implications that they are embracing it. The traditional example was in Africa when studies in the 90s were saying that Africa will never have a functional phone system because there is not enough copper uh, uh, that is being mined to lay down all the cables. But they were, of course, able to leapfrog to uh, wireless. And the same way they will leapfrog um, smart grids uh, that uh, provide electricity to a community based on a solar installation without being connected to the national grid are the only solution to rapidly deploy uh, the ever-increasing need uh, for elect electric uh, power uh, in Africa, for example. So blockchain um, is uh, fundamental because, and once again, just like I told you that AR and VR is not for people, we will have fun. I mean, we will have a lot of fun in AR and VR with Oculus and, and whatever else. Uh, but that it's really for the machines, the blockchain is for the machines as well. Uh, the, uh, the wallets that we will have with cryptocurrencies based on the blockchain are going to be dwarfed by the uh, trust networks that machines build among themselves uh, of uh, resource allocation, whether this is power, communication, um, transactions, uh, the Internet of Things is going to be powered by the blockchain. And what about human trust and the blockchain? So a digital reputational system, for example, for, for employees or people or organizations? Of course. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, um, I love Facebook. And, 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 and you are welcome to friend me on Facebook that I'm not going to be able to reciprocate because my, I, I filled my quota. Uh, and uh, and uh, the problem with Facebook is that if a handful of people report your profile and it is uh, suspended, maybe you get it back, maybe not, uh, but the entire web of reputation that you built, potentially in years of curating your content, of being very thoughtful in the comments, whatever you did, and, and there is a community of people that trust you on that platform, it is not yours, it doesn't belong to you. So yes, uh, uh, there is another Israeli startup that uh, we are looking at uh, that built uh, on, a, on a second generation blockchain platform a portable reputation system that belongs to the individual. And groups of individuals can pool that reputation and deploy it. We have seen an incredible application to that, which to me is the best uh, illustration of how money is, is in, in substantial and, and really it is not the point. Uh, when Elon Musk uh, looked at the plans of the high-speed rail in California and it uh, was supposed to be built in 20 years for 30 billion dollars and it would have become the slowest high-speed train in the planet, uh, really hopelessly ridiculous, he said, I'm kind of busy uh, running Tesla and, and colonizing Mars, but I, I, I really think this is wrong and, and I think there may be some kind of solution. And here it is, it's, I called it Hyperloop. Here are the designs, here is the idea, it's yours. And his reputation is so strong that everybody said, oh my God, this must exist. We have to make it real, and it is becoming real. So we will be able to deploy reputation as a resource when we want something 
it will happen. And the Dutch are also involved because they had the second uh, prize I noticed last week, I think, or two weeks ago, a day in Delft, um, Technical University in Delft. Anyway, so what about your vision uh, of, let's say, the blockchain? Because it's so fundamental to your story, right? The blockchain is sort of the underlying platform for all these decentralized solutions in food, finance, education, and what have you, health. So if you look, for example, the, about the, the fragmentation of the blockchains, huh? right now we have private blockchains, public blockchains, different variants. It's, it seems to be fragmenting. Mm -hmm. So what is your vision? How will this play out in the next, let's say, five to ten years? Um, what will happen? Is, yeah. it, is it analogous to the internet itself? Or do you think something else, something else will happen? So, uh, potentially, the blockchain can be more important than the internet itself. Um, the internet is, is, is wonderful. We all love it. Uh, it has been um, cracking under certain strains. Uh, technologically, it needs to evolve, uh, but uh, the blockchain is actually a consequence of a mathematical invention that specialists didn't foresee. It, it, it wasn't written in the cards. It was a problem that the blockchain solves that many people didn't even know if it had a solution and it could come in 10 years or 100 years. We have mathematical problems that we have been trying to solve for three, four, five hundred years and, and we haven't cracked. So the fact that uh, this invention uh, came about right at the moment when our infrastructure can support its application is, is, uh, is, is a coincidence, uh, but a wonderful uh, coincidence because then we will be able to, to use it. The current problems that uh, Bitcoin has are fine, and 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 it will be hard. Um, you know, there are startups that received uh, tens or hundreds of millions of dollars of funding uh, in order to leverage the current generation of Bitcoin uh, solutions, and and a lot of that funding is is going to go nowhere in, in terms of generating the kind of returns that uh, that they need but it, it will not extinguish the fire ignited by the invention that is going to power new generations of solutions all over the world. It is going to be um, a new way of uh, organizing society and the individual lives as well. So in your talk, you, you showed us that the arc of history moves towards more justice, a famous quote. Um, but is there also a different story that, that might be told? Uh, if you look at the world today, there are a lot of, let's say, conflicts. Is that temporary or do you think that's uh, something more fundamental going forward because of the transition period that's happening? Or what, what is your take on that? So, um, in a Dyson sphere is... Uh, what a Kardashev type 2 civilization builds when they are able to capture the entire energy output of their sun, uh, of the star around which their planet revolves. And we are a Kardashev type 0, 07 civilization. We are not even using the energy of our single planet, let alone uh, the, the, the star. Um, we built uh, um, a pro program of radio astronomy because even Dyson spheres emit uh, infrared radiation with a fingerprint that we think we can actually recognize um, that observed a hundred thousand galaxies and none of those galaxies uh, uh, well each of them has a billion stars let's say just to make a simple number so a hundred thousand billion stars have not been enclosed in a Dyson sphere that would l l uh, uh, leave uh, an imprint that we uh, recognized. And, and an interpretation of that, that our technological civilization is uh, the first. That uh, our ambition, 
our opportunity and our responsibility because we would build Dyson spheres if we were capable or when we will be capable is orders of magnitude, is many, many orders of magnitude larger than, than we have um, thought to, to have. Um, if it is true that we are the first, it is the first time that the universe opens its eyes and looks around and, and says, wow, look at this, what's going on? And, and we, are, we are that thing. And we have the responsibility of transforming the universe in, in, in a thinking thing that has the same level of passion and exhilaration that we prove. But there is no guarantee that we can succeed. Uh, technology is not a zero-sum game, uh, it is a positive-sum game. We have demonstrated it for the past 10,000 years, growing from a few million to several billion. Uh, we benefited from it, but statistical fluctuations can have uh, deviations from the mean and the trajectory can be very hard. And if your airplane is on a trajectory that seems to be going down, and you know that it will go trending up later on, but in the meantime it intersects uh, the, 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 the crash course of, of the terrain, it makes no good that uh, the future is going to be bright. So we have to solve our current problems as well. The conflicts, the, 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 the challenges, the wars, the suffering, we cannot overlook it. It, it has to be solved. I totally agree. Um, what, what I see right now is that the extremes get more or become more extreme uh, in a political sense, more nationalism, uh, economical, technological sense, more polarization, uh, social uh, economic inequality, and social cultural being. So, and even maybe even religious being. So, the extremes become more extreme, right? And you talked about um, overreactions, and I think that's a profound word overreactions. I notice overreactions uh, increasingly uh, in Holland, for example, or maybe even across Europe uh, and globally. So is that a result of uh, technological change, a result of singularity? Well, what's going on here? Is it, do you think, uh, do you think it's, it's, uh, it will be tackled in the right way? Or it, what, are, what are your thoughts about that? Um, it is always worth uh, being a little paranoid. Not to be carried away, uh, conspiracy theories um, are too good to be true. Uh, if we had people who were that smart to run the planet, I wish. I, I mean, I'm, but I but uh, but what we are seeing is existing incumbent complex systems wanting to survive, and and not wanting to seed. Um, decisions under the disguise of doing what they are supposed to be doing. The security theater we go through when we embark on a plane, uh, the uh, incredible amounts of money that are being spent in um, combating former friends who were trained and now they are labeled terrorists. Uh, the, the, the ridiculous and, 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 and suicidal uh, fueling of, of conflict through arms uh, sales in, in, in Africa uh, that we happily uh, exploit in order to keep nations weak and divided. Uh, the, uh, every time you look at a map and you see, you see a straight line, it's a reason for conflict. And as long as those straight lines are either not erased or become as wiggly as they naturally should be, uh, there will be a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, wars that uh, those who build and sell arms are going to be happy to, to help ignite and sustain. So what are you most optimistic about and why? Um, uh, about losing weight. <laughs> um, uh, la last time, last time I did this, you can look it up on Facebook. I posted 
my way constantly. And then I, I don't even remember why I stopped and, and, and I gained a lot of it back. Uh, and people tell me it's healthy, yes, but I'm lazy. So the reason I'm doing it is not because it, it should be healthy, but I was told that I have to wear a suit. And, 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 I, and I went to buy a suit and, and uh, the, the guy serving me tried a few on and, and said, sir, we have uh, custom tailoring as well. <laughs> and it is only three to five thousand dollars instead of whatever, right? So I said, no, well, thank you very much. And I decided to lose weight and buy normal clothing rather than having to have a custom tailored cloth uh, to spend all that money on. Uh, and, and, and yes, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm giving this ex uh, answer, uh, apart from making our audience laugh, is, is because uh, I am optimistic about the power of the individual to take charge, uh, to take uh, uh, our lives into our hands and, and make a difference. And enough people doing that, it's seven billion little differences. They add up. They add up big time. So if I look at your vision, eh, the, the, the final slides, empowerment, emancipation, etc. Eh, it all resonates uh, with me in terms of, this is already here, right? It's called Burning Man, the Burning Man Festival. So what are your thoughts about Burning Man and how does it uh, relate to your vision of the network society going forward? forward? Um, and there are places and, and conferences and, and things, uh, the TED conference, for example, or Burning Man, um, it must be that I will only go once it is not cool. So, so I, I, I obviously am familiar with the Burning Man in theory, but I haven't been. Uh, and so I, I don't want to comment because I like to comment on things that I've, I've tried and I like to experiment uh, going, you know, to, to places and, and see things by myself. You should go there anyway. Yeah, I know. But it is still cool, so I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Up to you. Anyway, final question. You always ask, what is the question I should have asked you? Okay? So you're quite famous for that for the last, uh, I think, eight years. <laughs> so what is the question I should have asked you? But I didn't yet. Huh. Well, uh, I, I, I really like uh, uh, questions because they are avenues to new types of understanding, right? Um, I am, uh, I am playing with with new questions all, all the time, and and one of the questions I'm I'm playing with is, and I I will actually uh, ask you as an exercise uh, to play with this question when you are home. Um, if our society is becoming more and more tolerant, and there are things that for us are just fine, but other people are prejudiced against. And now they are living in a society that is accepting whatever they are prejudiced against as normal. Can you think of something that you are prejudiced against, or it is even abhorrent to you, Maybe it is illegal and criminal today, but force yourself to think that in 10 years' time or 20 years' time, you will be living in a society where it is accepted and normal. I think that is a question that we should ponder. <laughs>